If I were to take some glycine and a little bit of citric acid, dissolve them into some water and add one to two mils, maybe three mils into this glass of mediocre table wine, it would improve the flavor. And this is basically flavor enhancement. Now, if you've ever wondered why commercial products often taste better than things you make at home, it can often be flavor enhancements or flavor enhancers. And this is a good example of one. This one works with alcoholic beverages, so I ha it may work with non-alcoholic ones. I just haven't tried it yet. But it works with any type of alcoholic beverage, so whether it's a spirit, a beer, or a wine. And what it does is kind of takes the harshness or the edges off. And it works really effectively. I've been playing with this for a while, and it's super simple. And I'm going to show you how to make this solution, and then you can play with it. But the one thing to know is it's glycine, not glycerin. I know uh, in the wine industry, they used to doctor wine with glycerin. That's a different subject. This is the health supplement, glycine. And then any citric acid, tartaric acid, even ascorbic acid works. So most acids will work in this scenario. Citric acid and tartaric acid seem to be the main ones. Now, it will also work with beta alanine. So this is another amino acid. Uh, so you can experiment with it. The, there are different results with different amino acids and different acids. So I will show you an example of mixing these two. I'll reference the patent here from 1971 where this comes from. And they have a lot of information in this as well as using other like cyclamate and other compounds. Cyclamate is, does have a sweetness to it. So it does interfere or increases the sweetness of these, but in some cases it says that it produces a smoother flavor. So you may want to experiment with that. But I'll show you one example. We'll do some taste testing. It's really easy to make. You're going to make, so this is 150 milligrams per mil. The one thing you need to know is that you can only dissolve 25 grams of glycine in 100 mils of water. And even then it's kind of pushing the limit. That's at 25 Celsius. If the closer you get to zero, uh, it gets down to 14 grams. So depending on how you store this, will determine how much glycine you add to this. Now, if you wanna do as much as you can, and then you'll probably need to store it at room temperature and you will need some of the preservatives. Uh, I've made a video on this in the past. A few drops into the bottle will extend the shelf life. If you keep it in the fridge, you're going to have to go below 14 grams, probably about 10 grams, and that will actually keep it stable. Otherwise, it's going to crystallize it. Now, there is a, it's not, it's a, it's a salt reaction. So the two compounds do come together, the citric acid and the glycine, but it's a really loose connection. So uh, you do need to heat this up a little bit. I just use some hot water from a kettle when I dissolve the salts and that is enough to produce this glycine citrate and that is the kind of compound that works but i've really found it's really the glycine that really makes the difference so i've played around with just using pure glycine and you can just add it to the wine and it does have that effect same as spirits and beer but it's much more convenient to do it in a liquid for dosing purposes now really simple you're just going to weigh out 18 grams of this of glycine and then three grams of citric acid into a beaker, add some water, hot water, so 90 degrees Celsius, just not boiling, but close enough. Stir it, add it to a bottle, top up to the 100, 120 mil mark, and you have your solution. It is not hard at all. If you can, if you've watched this channel for any length of time, you are completely capable of doing this. It's again, 18 grams and three grams, and you can change that out, or you can follow some of the other patent recipes. Uh, it has probably six or seven different combinations that work. And then you just start experimenting with it. So if I were to take two glasses of red wine here and simply add roughly a mil to one, and then give it a stir, or a swirl. I will start with the non-treated one. And so this wine is grown in a colder climate. It does have uh, some harshness to it. It's not like a 
good Margot or any of the higher end wines in France and California. So it is tannic, but when you taste it with the glycine mixture, it takes the edges off of it. And what it doesn't do is affect the tannins. So you will find that if you're tasting this and you're trying to get rid of the, that tannic nature of you know, affordable wines, it doesn't affect the tannins, but it does affect this harsh flavor that you sometimes find in these, whether it's because they haven't been aged long enough or just the quality of the grape. It does patch that up. And again, it's not gonna make it you know, two times better, but it does make it a preferred one. So if you did a blind tasting with a bunch of people, they'd prefer the treated one. That's what they found in the patent. Now, it's more obvious in white wines. So again, if I were to take a mill or two, and again, sometimes they use up to 1%. So if you have 100 mils of wine, that would be one gram of glycine, which is a lot. And again, people use glycine as a health supplement. Uh, they use five grams, it's often used for sleep. Some people use 10 grams a day. So not using a lot, though there are regulations in different countries, I'll talk about that in a bit. But if you were to just give this one a swirl and taste this one, it's not bad. This one does have Vidal grape in it, which is a hybrid grape, uh, a better tasting one, but it still has a, an element to it. Whereas this one just tastes better. Like it's one of those, it, it's really neat to play with. I really highly recommend you grab a thing of glycine and give it a shot. Now, you can put this in beer. So this is a non-alcoholic beer. This is something I'm going to try in the future. I'll probably post some of those updates over on Patreon. Whiskey and cocktails. So I've found it works really well in uh, whiskey. For some reason, whether it's the amyl alcohol or that whiskey flavor, it tends to improve it in a significant way. So you don't need much, only probably 100 mil or 100 milligrams of this for like a shot of, you know, 30, 40 mils. And what it does is it just smooths it out. It takes off a lot of that harshness. Now this is a Canadian rye, so it's got a little more bite than most Canadian whiskeys but it really does smooth it out. And I do like this raw, uh, whiskey, as you can see, uh, but it, I know this flavor, it smooths it out. It's fun to play with. Now you can do it with beer. Uh, you can probably try it with Guinness. I don't know, it may work in coffee. So this is the, the coffee nitro cold brew. Really good beer, by the way. You could try this in any beverage you want and just do blind tastings do blind tastings with friends, see how it works out. And again, you could try, instead of using glycine, you could try alanine, you could try tartaric acid if you want it just in wines, you could try citric acids if you want it in cocktails. So if you're doing a daiquiri, a citric acid one may work better for you. You can use ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C, and you can even play around with cyclamate if you want a uh, improve the sweetness. So it can push things over the edge because it is a high intensity sweetener. Now we do need to talk a little bit about regulations. So in Canada, you can use glycine in a beverage up to 360 milligrams with no issues. After that, you basically have to list it on the nutrition label and make a statement uh, saying that it does include glycine. In the US, it's a little bit different. Uh, the FEMA grass document, as of the FEMA 27 news, or release, uh, it is allowed to be used at 1,000 parts per million in beverages as a flavoring. But if you're using it as a supplement, you can use obviously as much as you want, but you have to list it on the label. Uh, I don't really want to get into too much regulatory stuff really boring and kind of the, so if you have questions, ask over on Patreon, but 
Most of the time I just end up Googling it and giving you the answer. Uh, I do list some of the places where you can find this information, but it is safe to use. Lots of people take this. You buy it all over the internet and people take five grams, 10 grams at night. Uh, it is a very common amino acid. Uh, the only problem with it is if you take too much, it does cause drowsiness. So that's why people take it for sleep. But in the case where we're using it, so in the whiskey one, I only use 100 to 150 milligrams in this. Now you can use a little more. In the wine, you tend to use a little bit more, so up to 1,000 milligrams. You know, maybe 500 milligrams would be sufficient. Your taste is going to dictate what level you're going to use it at because this is really a thing where it's about personal preference. But you can really you know, smooth things out. So if I were to add more to this, it does get even smoother. Now there's still that alcohol burn, but that amyl alcohol kind of wet dog cardboard flavor that you can find in some of these whiskeys seems to be toned down you still get the rye flavor through it and it still tastes quite good. So it's not making it dull or it's not making it, you know, different. It's just toning down some of the harsh edges. So if you have somebody who doesn't like whiskey or is just kind of on the edge of liking whiskey, this may push them over. If you experiment with this, post it below. I'm always curious to see how people use this information. But again, it's as simple as mixing 18 grams of this with three grams of that adding it to a 120 ml bottle with hot water and then dosing. And you will find that even with really harsh spirits like Fen Chu, uh, this one has got an acquired taste and it is somewhat potent. It will change the flavor of it. And of course, cocktails. So there are so many cocktails that you can play with this in and just dose a small amount. So if you're finding that you're not getting the cocktail smooth enough, this may be your solution. So I suppose that's enough for now. Uh, I will put it into your hands to play around with. I do love seeing people play with this stuff. We do have a Discord server that you can join over through Patreon. So if you want to talk more, check that out. I do show up occasionally. So that's all I have for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.